The Rio Negro in Brazil. One of the largest tributaries in the world. It pumps a million cubic feet of water into the Amazon River every second. During each wet season, the waters rise, flooding the forest floor. And amongst these flooded trees live millions and millions of tiny tropical fish, many of which are common in home aquariums around the world. Chief amongst them is the Cardinal Tetra, a tiny iridescent fish whose population explodes during the wet season. Today, we're following Maricelia and her daughter, Josele, a pair of piaperos, or local fishers, as they collect cardinal tetras for the aquarium trade. In this flooded forest, there are likely millions of cardinals. But that doesn't mean catching them is easy. These waterways may look inviting, but the river is filled with branches, roots, and stumps that would snag a large cast or seine net. Here, the only way to catch small fish is by hand. And that is where Maricelia's hapiche comes into play. This long net can be operated with just one hand leaving her second hand free so she can use a paddle to herd the fish. With each dip, Maricelia captures a few dozen fish, which she can then collect with a bowl. Tossing the fish into a waiting basket may seem unsympathetic. But this technique minimizes the average time fish are exposed to air, which drastically increases their long-term survival. These fish will end up in home aquariums. But many more fish will continue their lives in the water below. Years of studying these collection sites haven't shown a measurable impact on the base population of fish. So it appears that hand-catching fish is sustainable in these waterways. This is Daraqua, a small fishing village on the Rio Negro. They don't depend on logging or mining or farming, all of which can threaten the rainforest. They rely on fishing. The cardinal tetras they catch are stored in holding pens. These fish will be sold for a few pennies apiece. So the people of Daraqua try to collect as many as they can before they transfer these fish to a motorboat that brings them to the capital city of Manaus where they're sold. This is the story of the people that live and work on the Rio Negro. It's the story of a vast and beautiful rainforest under threat from the outside world. And it's the story of a tiny fish that's surprisingly important. So that was an early look at a small portion of the film I'm working on, Fishing for Cardinals. Now, what you just watched isn't just a lift from the final film. The actual film will feel very different. But the story you just saw, the story will stay the same. This story was brought to my attention and largely supported by Project Piaba, an international nonprofit that is focused on telling the story and promoting these local fishers, these piaberos, that are collecting fish from the Rio Negro and selling them to the international aquarium trade. The real hook of it, the draw, is that this appears to be sustainable. And that's why I wanted to tell this story. So often, stories of conservation are heartbreaking. But this one, this seems to be a story of local fishers that are collecting a resource from their environment and not having a long-term 
negative impact on the ecosystem. In a world where the Amazon rainforest is really struggling to survive because of pressures from logging, from farming, and from mining, this is a story of the people that live on the Rio Negro getting their resources, getting their income from a form that is sustainable. And that is an amazing story. And it's a story that I'm excited to tell. But I need your help, at least those that speak Portuguese. See, I have a collection of interviews that I would love to be translated. So if you speak Portuguese and you're willing to donate a little bit of your time to help this project, follow the link in the description. It would mean a lot to me to be able to use their voices on this YouTube channel. I hope that you'll consider subscribing to this channel so you'll get continuous updates on this project. Now, most of my videos will still be around the actual aquariums, like the one in the background of this shot, but uh, I want to bring us to the Rio Negro region every month or two and check in on some of the incredible stories that are happening in the ecosystems where a lot of the fish from the aquarium trade find their home. If you want to know more about this story, you can check out Project Piawa's website. There is a link in the description. And there's a link to my film's website, fishingforcardinals.com. Over time, that site will become more and more robust. So I hope you check it out. I also want to thank the person that provided me with all the drone footage for this project. Uh, her name is Chelsea Green. She's a good friend of mine, and she's working on a different film on the Amazon rainforest. The story of why this forest is disappearing. It's called One Forest. I will provide a link to her website as well. And I want to thank her so sincerely for lending me a couple of shots so that you get the sense of this ecosystem. You'll be hearing a lot more about this project as the months go on, as I figure out how to go back to the Rio Negro during a, a world filled with COVID, as well as figuring out how to best tell this story and share it with the world. So I hope that you follow along on this journey. I'm really excited to share it with you. Thanks so much. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.